Donald Trump, the former U.S. president, has pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts. He finished his speech after he rattled off a list of complaints about the various investigations into him, his company, as well as his family. He spoke for just about 40, 25 minutes, shorter than his usual long, meandering speeches. But he offered criticism of Joe Biden, his son Hunter Biden, but otherwise stuck to criticizing prosecutors and judges. My colleague Namrita Brar is live with us, currently tracking all the latest developments for you. Now, Namrita, we were speaking about the speech earlier. Trump also referred to the judge and his family as a Trump-hating judge with a Trump-hating wife and a family whose daughter worked for Kamala Harris during his speech. Yes, uh, the attacks indeed were decidedly very personal. In fact, he even talked about reverse racism. Uh, now, remember, the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, is a black person, and so is Letitia James, who's the Attorney General of the State of New York, uh, who is political platform for being elected, according to Donald Trump, has been to get him. Uh, that's the sole uh, sort of election uh, campaign that they themselves have run on as candidates to the attorney general's office. So this is obviously a very extremely direct attack uh, on the lawmakers there by Donald Trump. I also want to just quickly say that um, he, his biggest detractors, this is interesting because his biggest detractors, including Mitt Romney, who again was one of the Republicans to vote for uh, Donald Trump's impeachment on both occasions. He has also made a statement saying uh, that Donald Trump is unfit to be president, but this matter is decidedly political. So it's interesting uh, that despite the spate of charges, and we've covered this, uh, I'm sure, over the years, um, uh, that uh, uh, all the possible charges that Donald Trump could face, it is very interesting that his biggest detractors are coming in and supporting him at a time like this, which means uh, that to compete against him is going to be difficult on the Republican Party platform. And uh, just very quickly, those pictures of Donald Trump coming in and also talking about his cases, which are likely in the future, are important. Now, remember, this is just the first of many cases that we can expect in the pipeline coming Donald Trump's way, uh, including uh, keeping classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, his private residence, including uh, possible election interference in the Georgia uh, elections, and the most important one of them all, which is his role in possible possibly inciting the January 6th Capitol Hill riots. So all those are important cases which Trump talked about, uh, giving an indication that they are coming soon and he wants his base to be prepared and use this time as almost leverage, as an opportunity to get himself more political mileage as a run-up to the presidency. Right. In his speech, he also quoted unnamed analysts who have said that there's no strong evidence against him. He said every single pundit and legal analyst said there is no case, but we don't even know who these analysts are. That's always the case with Donald Trump, isn't it? Uh, Donald Trump is uh, known to go off script. Uh, he uh, tells his ver own version of truth uh, many a time. And uh, this is a known animal in that sense. Initially, uh, when he did first come into power, uh, in the run up of that, he was dismissed. He was mocked at. Uh, people were unwilling to believe that he even stood a remote chance of getting the Republican nomination, let alone being a president. Uh, but this man has surprised America and has surprised the world. Uh, so with Donald Trump, I think the fact that uh, his truth might not be based on facts, uh, and that is clear. I think both sides of the political uh, party debate do uh, sense, uh, do tend to admit to that. The point is, there is another sort of surge almost uh, that he uses, which is like every every kind of opportunity, uh, whether it's bad publicity, good publicity, seems to be used. Um, in his favor. He's, you know, a showman and we saw him use that to his advantage even on a day where anyone uh, facing such kind of scrutiny would uh, clearly have a very sober approach. Right, as you mentioned, he has surprised America and the world indeed. But as far as the optics are concerned at his Mar-a-Lago resort, well, the event is largely indistinguishable from a Trump campaign rally, many would say, that would occur anywhere across the US.
I mean, just take a look at the elaborate crystal chandeliers hanging from the grand ballroom. I mean, it's something you don't usually see after a historic indictment and he's addressing everyone after being formally charged. There were also screens up asking people, asking his supporters actually to donate to his campaign. But the prosecutor and the defense are at odds, we know that. Namita, what happens next? When is Trump's case expected to go to trial? I know we don't have specific dates out yet. It is supposed to be uh, around September and uh, what we do believe is that first obviously a jury will have to be formed which is going to be a 12 member jury and remember New York state has an interesting process of this jury because all 12 have to vote to convict him if one does not he might not be acquitted but he will not be convicted so there is this whole legal speak, so to speak, and it's very difficult to form a jury where every member is unbiased towards the case. You'll have equal representation from both sides. Uh, like I've said before, uh, one of the, uh, the few questions which is asked to a jury member, and I've been on jury service, it's a mandate as a U U.S. citizen, you do uh, have to go and serve jury, um, uh, jury time. The questions asked is, do you know this man? Are you, do you have strong feelings about this defendant? What is your opinion one way or the other? And those are very difficult questions for anyone to answer because he is clearly one of the most famous faces, not just here in the United States of America, but across the world, uh, including in India as well. So it's hard to ignore the impact and how that will play out. But we do know it's going to be maximum 136 years of, um, of prison time which is which is just the legal statute so let me correct that he is unlikely to serve any prison time even if he's convicted he's unlikely because the nature of these charges are business fraud charges and uh, these uh, are have not in the history of america ever gone to prison time uh, un under these statutes so it will keep him busy in in terms of appearing for the trial and his take on this is that it is a way of uh, not letting him campaign for the upcoming elections. It's going to take away from that time. But beyond that, um, it is not likely to, to result in a huge conviction. Right. So no prison time for the former U.S. President Donald Trump, as Namrata mentioned, for now. But Namrata, in New York, many would say Trump actually got an underwhelming show of support. Perhaps the biggest blow for Trump in all of this is that the charges have come in New York City, the city he actually helped build and which built him. It is really uh, coming home in an ironic sense uh, of the sun. He landed in Queens, that's the place uh, he belongs to. Uh, and it was a very different New York, uh, if you remember from the time when he was elected, that surprise night when Hillary Clinton was expected to win and there was such a huge surge of support for her which then came to Trump's favor. But let me just tell you a couple of things about New York. The New York City is decidedly liberal. It is democratic leaning. It's historically been the case. Uh, so it's not a city where you see a lot of Trump supporters. But outside New York City, and including um, a borough of New York City, Staten Island, where Trump hopes to take his case. He wants to change it there um, and get the jury uh, based on uh, that location. That area actually is uh, Republican um, supporting. So it's interesting to see the makeup and the composition of the country as far as these cases go and which cities uh, will sort of instigate these cases and uh, how they're going to promise a sort of more balanced approach to this. But yes, it, uh, it might not have been the Trump support uh, base that we have seen in his rallies, but uh, there is a lot of conversation online. And as I said, uh, a lot of support coming through people who don't even want him as a presidential candidate, but feel that this might be a political witch hunt. Also, Namrita, just as we wrap, I don't want to keep you up too late. We know Republicans claim the indictment is a travesty of justice aimed at sinking Trump politically. But how are the Democrats reacting to it so far? Any notable reactions? The current for, uh, President Joe Biden has been slightly mum. Absolutely. He said that he'll watch the news uh, tonight, but the White House declined to comment about anything in terms of President Biden's approach uh, to what we witnessed today. It's interesting. Democrats are in a bit of a predicament. I can tell you the earlier reactions were one of vindication 
was one of the fact that the legal system has finally prevailed, that even the U.S. former president is not above the law and it finally delivers. But that has quickly changed when they've seen the kind of Republican advantage uh, that is coming his way. The fact that he's got the support from his, his detractors, his um, uh, people who were actually strongly critical of him within the Republican Party. And I think it's put the Democrats in an awkward predicament. Uh, we saw some of the uh, so-called liberal media as well cut out of his speech just before it ended. Uh, because the question is, how much time do you give this man who's already got uh, so much publicity? Every move uh, from his landing his Trump Boeing private jet at LaGuardia today, to his cavalcade, uh, the Secret Service. I saw, you know, about 12 helicopters hovering around uh, 100 Center Street and the Manhattan Criminal Court while covering it earlier uh, this morning. Uh, you've got snipers, you've got 36,000 New York Police Department uh, on the ground as well. So how much attention do Democrats want to give Donald Trump? Because every kind of attention, every bit of attention, even when it is the most negative, seems to be turned in his favor very radically.